before I begin the unique path I had chosen. Let's play a game. I hope everyone in this auditorium has a coin. If not, then think of one virtually. Before coming to the event, I already noted down the outcomes for the flips which you all are going to perform. But since you might be performing it virtually, please help me to follow the instructions. If it's a head, please raise your right hand. If it's a tail, please raise your left hand. I want my audience to be physically interactive. For the first flip, I want to see the hands. It's a head. The ones which, who have got heads, please continue to play. Second flip. It's a tails. Next flip. It's a head. Next flip. It's a head. Can see a bit less hands. It's a, bit, it's a little bit silly to moralize, but it's socially acceptable. But the moral of the above story is, just don't push your luck. It's all about mathematical probability, and for every flip, a bit easier. Think of any small natural number. It can be seven, it can be 10, it can be 22. Think of one, since we are going to do some tricks. Add 4 to it. Multiply your result by 4. Subtract 8 from it. Divide your result by 4. Subtract the original number from the current number you have. The answer, everyone, is 2. Well, the moral of the story is, you can always play different games and win your chances. In the next few minutes, I would like to tell you the unique path I had chosen. About seven years ago, I started working on different science fair projects and competing at a global level. Just being a freshman in high school, I stepped into multiple disciplines, from sports to academics and, and extracurricular activities. Over the period of next two years, I failed multiple times to present a mark while competing in different science fairs. But swimming remained the main sport and was a go-to. After a year in 2015, I decided and attempted to work solo on a project called How Can I Stop Suicide Bombers, which later went on to become a global impact under Community Impact Award and was recognized by Google. The same year, I competed in the National Swimming Championships and football was the other sport I started following. As of today, I'm a big fan of Borussia Dortmund. As every other Indian student, I opted to do engineering and the preparation for the biggest examination started. But I still kept working on different science fair projects and invitations to speak at different schools. I shared my journey and the stories. Continuing this path, during the beginning of grade 10, I wrote a letter to the government officials for the funds for my project of how can I stop suicide bombers. For the next two, three months, I never got a reply. Now, knowing that every other student is focused on their academics in grade 10, I try to be different from everyone else. Invitations to work with the Anti-Terry Squad Mumbai came from a reply after a reply from the Defense Ministry of India 
at an early age, it was quite motivating. Chance to speak at a convention center, at a technical event at IIT Guwahati, Technish, where I spoke in front of hundreds of IITs and other delegates. At the same event, I met an Indian Army Colonel from the Northeast Regiment who gave the proposal in front, of, in, in front of me of solving a problem for the soldiers in Siachen. Later on, I went on to design a suit for the Indian soldiers called Siachen Wearing a redesigned suit for the soldiers battling on the world's biggest battlefield. As of today, and after three years of research, the suit has five new features. Continuing the path, in the meanwhile, I was applying to top US universities after asked by some of the professors from IITs who guided me to pursue a degree and research advancement in the United States. Now, it was the game time. The biggest trap, as every other Indian student faces in grade 12. Still preparing for JWE, the joint entrance examination, the biggest competitive examination in the country. But knowing that I don't want to be an engineer, I stepped into multiple fields, from sports to academics, to work experience, research advancement, and somewhere studying abroad. I opened all the fields for myself during grade 12. Actually, I was studying in the most competitive classroom, where on one hand, I had All India Ranked 1, Rundarati, in JWE Mains, in Girls, and on the other hand, All India Ranked 2 in JE Advance, Akshat Chu, who was my close friend, and many such more cases. I knew it was a big task and a big challenge. I went on to crack, joint entrance examination with a good rank and with, with a good score. But I did not book a seat at the most prestigious Indian Institute. While on the other hand, I got accepted to 23 top universities, US universities, five Ivy Leagues, and it was time for the big school. As of today, I'm an author of two books, The Mystery of IIT Bombay Murders and The Story of My Life in 330. I'm a young entrepreneur with two startups, an emerging youth in the United States in 2018, and a public speaker in front of you. I'm 19 years old and I'm urging this other. The above story won't tell you the insights, but can guarantee a rare luck. Or, well, is it a game? Yes, it is. A game is any interaction between multiple people where each person's payoff is decided by what others do. It can apply to the game of poker, but it can apply to any interaction where people get together and getting each other's business. Today, any challenge, any decision can be solved by this mathematical strategy, which was designed by John Van Neumann and John Nash called the Game Theory. Game Theory is incredibly wide-ranging. Game Theory has two main branches, non-cooperative and cooperative. Non-cooperative covers the competitive social interaction where there will be some winners and some losers. While when you are competing with others, it makes sense to choose the course of action which benefits you the most no matter what everyone else decides to do. Let me tell you the three instances where I use this particular theory. The first instance, working for the anti trade Squad, Mumbai, and the Indian Space Research Organization at an early age is one of the rarest things to do in this country. The probability is less than 10 out of 1.36 billion people. But analyzing, breaking down the probability, I was able 
to move on. The second instance would be cracking JW with a good rank, with a good score. Every year about 1.2 million students appear for this examination in this country. And scoring and getting a rank in top hundreds is really difficult. But again, the non-cooperative game theory comes into existence. The third instance would be getting into five Ivy League U.S. colleges, the top universities in the, in the world, entire world. But again, the probability lies one out of 15,000 students. Now then there is the competitive game theory, or the cooperative game theory, where every individual's concern is where they have agreed to work together to a common goal. It can be anything where a group of friends trying to split up a cost to pay up a bill at a restaurant to a coalition of nations deciding how to divide up the burden of stopping climate change. In cooperative game theory, the main concern, the main question is how much each player should contribute and how much everyone should benefit from it. Let me break down the cooperative game theory with two instances. I actually went down to bring and make up this platform where to bring in the world's smartest brains from the world's top universities to solve global challenges. Where we redesigned the suit for the Indian soldiers to diverting a natural disaster. Knowing that every recruited student is equally as smart as other. But then now the question is, how much would each player contribute We break down this particular analysis using cooperative game theory. The second instance where we use cooperative game theory is when I went on to play for the most elite US college soccer team. Knowing that every player is as tough as other. But being a team sport, Every player's contribution equally matters. Now, no matter what happened in the World Cup last year, but the team which proved to be everyone's favorite was Iceland. Pure contribution. Now, I might be breaking the insights of a locker room talk or a coach strategy, but let me tell you. Almost every soccer coach or any coach around the world uses game theory, and even I do. This simple mathematical strategy can be used to look into your everyday challenges or your everyday decisions. It's incredibly brilliant. In competitive situation, game theory can tell you how to be smart. In cooperative situation, Game theory can tell you how to be fair. This simple mathematical strategy can be used for any analysis, for any team activity. Now let me talk about the other strategy. Ever heard of the term Mitya Reflexive? Anyone? Mitya Reflexive. Let me spell it for you. M E T I E R R E F L E X I V E, Mitya Reflexive. I bet no one would have heard it because it's my own strategy. <laughs> Mitya Reflexive is a strategy that has been redesigned from Niche Hassel. It's one of the world's famous marketing strategies which was designed by Guy Kawasaki. 
the Ahmed and Majlist, whom I made last year. Well, Mitya Reflexive is a simple chart. On the horizontal axis, we have productivity, which is equivalent to the value of the decisions, of the challenges, or the product. On the vertical, or the vertical axis, we measure creativity, or the uniqueness. This is a two by two matrix. BTR reflexive can tell us, or guide us, to see where we lie in this society. If I analyze myself, and put myself in this strategy, I would be at the lower right bottom corner towards productivity. But I want to be creative. Over the period of past five years, I've analyzed every challenges I've faced, every decisions I've made using a mathematical strategy. You will fail multiple times. You won't be correct all times, but you will improvise and it helps. Strategies in numbers can lead you to your goal. A stand as one in 1.36 billion of 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. But what drives me are the figures which motivates me to be a change. In 2015, I actually wrote a letter to the Prime Minister of India knowing that the PM receives 10,000 emails and letters every day. But the odds of the letter being ex getting accepted and getting a reply after it was even rare than getting accepted to five Ivy League US colleges in the same year. Pure strategy. Math, numbers, can be creative and even productive. Before I come to the end of this talk, I would like to analyze three key things. First, don't push your luck. Improvise your game theory. And I quote, logic can guide you along the path, but choosing axioms is up to you. Second, Mitya reflexive. You can go and use my theory. It's pretty impressive. And third, be the change in the world. This makes the world your integral with respect to time. That's a pretty sweet claim to fame. Hence, the road chosen was similar to many, but ended up different. A 19-year-old can tell you to improvise, but the road chosen was a different path. Thank you so much.